Dame Sarah Thornton, the UK's independent anti-slavery commissioner, in a recent presentation mentioned that over 40 million persons are victims of uh, modern slavery on any given day. Over 70% of these are women and girls and one in four are children. Human trafficking is a worldwide problem and not just a problem that faces the UK. So what happens abroad in countries such as Sudan has a knock-on impact on countries such as the UK. Sudan was selected as a case study for our research because it's a vital link in transnational migratory chains, functioning as a destination, transit and source country. This is characterised by flows of refugees and irregular migrants from surrounding countries, alongside patterns of violence and displacement within Sudan itself. The country has long experienced political, economic and environmental crises, institutional fragility, conflict and corruption, creating a context conducive to various illicit activities, including human trafficking. In our report, we found that COVID-19 had little discernible impact on the criminal networks, perpetrators and methods that underpin the trafficking industry. The dynamics of vulnerability and the transit routes used to ferry migrants across the country have changed in part due to the impact of the pandemic. For example, restrictions in mobility have increasingly isolated domestic workers, exposing them to uh, rising levels of exploitation and abuse. Likewise, uh, safe houses that were already in short supply have been forced to close leaving vulnerable populations and victims of trafficking exposed to greater dangers. In terms of transit, while these routes have been quite adaptable and dynamic, um, there do seem to be indications that routes north towards Egypt have been revived, and there has been an uptick of smuggling and trafficking in areas like Darfur. COVID-19 has also disrupted the capacity of criminal justice, governmental and humanitarian organisations to deliver services to survivors, and to prosecute perpetrators. A disastrous outcome given the coverage of counter-trafficking activities were already fairly limited. Cash straps, institutions and police departments have been further starved of resources and in certain cases have displayed a tendency or a reluctance to arrest perpetrators in part because they don't wish to spread the virus in detention facilities. Now the government has introduced a three-year strategy building on its previous commitments but there continue to be significant challenges. For a start, there's problems with the legislation's design, its feasibility and its resourcing. There's also a lack of institutional memory, knowledge and experience within an increasingly divided transitional government. There also appears to be a bit of incohesion when it comes to understanding what the problem actually is. There is still poor coordination and limited consensus over the nature of the problem within the Sudanese government and between different Sudanese stakeholders and also between the Sudanese government and international donors. Finally, corruption and human rights abuses by police, RSF paramilitaries and the Sudanese army make it difficult for international donors to collaborate with those stakeholders supposedly operating on the front lines of counter-trafficking activity, especially as there are allegations that elements or individuals within the Sudanese security forces are themselves complicit in the criminal networks they're trying to tackle. In our recommendations for Sudan, many of these can read across into many countries that are suffering the same problem. We recommended that the human trafficking needed proper resourcing uh, and aid that goes beyond training and awareness to actual service delivery. We also recommend that migration is dealt with as an issue to reduce the attractiveness and the opportunities for uh, people to be exploited by traffickers and people smugglers. Additionally, we need to include the voice of women where gender issues are uh, rightfully placed fore and centre in the policy. Likewise with children, with alternatives for proper education that doesn't put them in harm's way. Education and awareness support in order to empower local actors such as those engaged in humanitarian aid and support to victims of modern slavery. Lastly, proper governance and institutional know-how that allows the 
transitional government in Sudan to benefit from the knowledge and know-how of international actors and organizations that can assist in making Sudan a less attractive place for modern slavery and human trafficking.